That's your problem. Do you know what? Do you know how it is to walk in here? She stays out all night boozing. My life's just going out, getting drunk, shopping, looking good, getting told I look good, and just having fun. But Jade's drinking is out of control. Start out getting drunk at one of like, my friend's house on my house, drink a bit. On the way here, drink a bit. Go to a bar, drink a bit. Get here, drink a bit. By the time we leave, <laughs> And Mum Rebecca is at the end of her tether. It's getting out of hand and it's painful to see somebody just literally destroyed themselves. Jade was raised in East London by her single mum after her dad left when she was young. I've given her everything. I've put everything on hold for her. But I've been a father and mother in her life in the last 18 years. But that never stopped Jade idolising her dad. I really, 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 really loved my dad. He was like a proper main part in my life. And with Jade's dad dying two years ago, it's made matters worse. Now he's gone and I don't really care about anyone else. I don't even care about like his side of the family. I just only cared about my dad. When she lost her dad, and I think that's when things really, again, just got out of hand. Jade's relationship with her traditional Ugandan mum is now a breaking point. I just don't feel like I really want to be around my mum anymore. You call her, say, what time are you coming back? She doesn't answer the phone. You do the waiting game until she comes back. Jade, you need to look respectable. I do look respectable. No, no, no. You're, you're going out and you're walking out like that. I, I'm not going to say what I feel that you look like. I don't tell her when I'm coming home. I just come home when I come home, if I come home. I'm not coming back today, by the way. See you in 20 years. If I weren't going out, I'd just be depressed. But since I go out, I just think it's fun. I don't think there's a point of life if you're not going to go out. I feel I'm losing her. There's no connection. We are losing that. No relationship between mother and daughter. Connor, your brother had £10 in his wallet. No one never touched it. I'm oh, sorry, I don't believe you. I just don't believe you anymore. So who took it then? I don't know. What, the fairies come in, did they? Yeah. I smoked it once a week, twice a week, and then I got to three times a week, and I smoke it every day. But now I get to a point where I have to smoke more than £10 pounds worth, so I wouldn't affect me at all. Connor lives with single mum Sue and younger brother Harry, but he doesn't lift a finger around the house. Connor's day, basically, he gets up and he goes out, meets his mates, probably goes and smoke some dope, have some drink, comes back, stays up all night, and sleeps all day. But not having a job doesn't stop Connor from splashing the cash. I used to spend at least £100 a week easily. Any money I get, it would be on weed. Out of work and with no education, Connor's disruptive behaviour is ripping the family apart. When are you going to actually do something with your life? I went up to the job centre place yesterday. You don't work, you've got no money coming in. Oh, I have no money. Have you? Yeah. yeah. £50 a week, and what is that going to be spent on? Dope? Probably. Yeah, weed. Yeah, it's my money. Money. my it? money, my life. Oh, I've sat down and cried on my own. You know, I've sat down and think, where have I gone wrong? I'm just hoping in a few years' time that he realises what he's doing. But it's not just his mum who's affected by his behaviour. <laughs> I'm a dad. He's six, uh, seven months now. A little kid called Lois. Um, she's the girl for eight months and she fell pregnant. So she had the kid and all, and I don't really, I haven't really paid any attention to it, to be honest. <laughs> the first two months, he was really good dad and then after that he just started fading away i'd asked him to come around to help me and he, he was just like now nah, i'm with my mates and obviously he was with his mates getting stoned i've probably seen him since he's been born twice <laughs> maybe about five times probably if i had a tanner i would think well lewis some weed and i'd think shit i'd actually buy weed of it <laughs> in a desperate bid to change their lives Jade and Connor's mums are sending them overseas to live under another family's strict regime. Bye, Mum. Okay, bye, Jade. Big good. <laughs> Make up. Oh, yeah, big good. <laughs> She's a lovely girl when she wants to be. But I have to say, in the past two years, I don't understand her myself. And I would say it's her last chance to get things right. See you later. All right. Bye. Right. He has got a soft spot, but he can be very headstrong, and hopefully they'll be stronger than him. 
Yeah. I'm Jade. I'm Connor. How are you feeling? I'm well scared of you. Like, do you know? Yeah, no. They ain't taking my fight. No, I need an image. Come on. All right. Yeah. Connor and Jade will be heading to Seattle, the largest American city in the Pacific Northwest, under the watchful eyes of mum and dad, Denise and Rob. The couple both have children from their previous marriages. Denise's sons, 21-year-old Josh and 17-year-old Isaiah, and Rob's daughters, 16-year-old Laura and 14-year-old Brooklyn. Lord God bless us, we our body. God, you are such a... The couple are a united front with strong beliefs. Quite often when I'm having conversations, I will use the term um, WWJD, what would Jesus do? You know, every step of our lives and our decisions are strongly based on a Christian fundamental belief. To us, it's basically a daily part of life. And it was their faith that helped Denise after an accident left her paralyzed. The last thing I remember is crossing the double yellow line and the, the SUV that we were in rolled over three times and the roof crushed in over my head. So I end up with a spinal cord injury. You have to make a choice whether you're gonna let that stop you or just make you stronger. I was already strong my faith. It just, that's what pulled me through a lot of this faith. Ooh, nice shot. But the accident has not stopped Denise handing out the rules and chores around the house. What you doing? My mom, she's, she's strict. Looks like you tidied up a bit. Probably the most enforced rule, but number one, no drugs and no drinking or tobacco products. Go ahead. Guy's calling up. We're expecting them to follow our rules and um, deal with the consequences if they're not followed. After an 11-hour flight, the teens land in Seattle and head to their new family. I just hope for God, they're not just complete twats. I am proper nervous now. Now we're coming up to it. Whoa, look at that house. Oh, here they come. I've the one on the belly on him. That's a dad. He's fighting. How you doing? Hello, buddy. Hi, Good to Connor. see you. We're so Hi, glad you're here. Nice Thank to you. meet you. Hi, how are you? Jade. Jade. It's wonderful Hi. to meet you. Hello, Hi. dear. Hi. We're so glad you're here. Let's go on inside and show you the house. Uh, this will be your room, Connor, this week. Oh, I knew it, yeah. I've never seen such a clean room. No, neither have I. Oh. Everything's like perfect. Nice. The mum seems nice. Yeah. The mum seems very really nice. She seems like a pure nice girl, but the dad. Dad seems like popular. But weird, doesn't he? He's like a right weirdo. He's like a ginger freak. It's one of them kids at school, you never like the old gingers. <laughs> oh, this is massive. I've never seen a house like that in England. Oh, I was proper shocked. It looks proper nice. Like, it seems a bit upper class though, isn't it? Like a bit high market. Got to take your shoes off when you're walking through the house. It's like, yeah. Before the teens settle in, Denise and Rob want to explain what they expect over the next seven days. Connor, Jade, could you guys come down here? We'll have a quick talk. How are you guys? Well, now is the time we need to talk to you about the rules of our house. First and primary things that we insist on is that we don't permit uh, drinking, smoking, um, no alcohol, no cannabis, no cigarettes. Uh, so you don't know where you can smoke anywhere like outside the house. We're so expecting that, that you're going to give up your cigarettes and there is not going to be I any smoking be this giving week. Up my cigarettes at all. We're going to have to come to some kind of an agreement on that. Well, I'll do five a day. Um, shoot for three. <laughs> I'd, no. Shoot for three. Four. Come on. Four. I know you can do it. Four, four. a day. I'll do I'll <laughs> come boys and go four. That's in the middle. Do your daily chore. Jade, your chore will be setting the table for dinner. Oh, and then. Connor, your chore will be after the dinner dishes are cleared to wipe off this table and the counters after dinner <laughs> each day. Computer we do have over there on the wall. There's one for everyone to use. Um, you may use that. Oh, we do not allow Facebook. What do you use a computer for if you can't go on Facebook? There's an amazing number of things you can do with a computer without oh, getting into a social network. I want to clear out sand. The smoking, where would you want me to smoke? Off no, the premises. Think, uh, maybe off on the street. On the street, toward the cul-de-sac. 
What, just like around the corner sort of thing, yeah? Yeah, yeah it's the oh, circle yeah, thing yeah, at the end of the yeah, pavement. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm going for fag anyways. There's like 10 people to fucking set a table for. I ain't sitting no table, that's just bullshit. I'll eat off a table and all that. I don't mind doing that and food upstairs, that's fine. Yeah, you ain't got to set the table, that's why you eat off it. Yeah, that's I've got to set it. I'll clean all that shit. Well, I ain't touching any of that stuff. That's just bullshit. There's a lot of zombie fight in that house, man. They need fucking uh, yeah. the table and all that. He's loading up a they little bit. They need some fucking alcohol in them, that's what they need. Every weekend, the whole family has to work together on the household chores. The British teens have only just arrived, but that doesn't mean they're exempt. OK, so today's Saturday and we're going to do our yard work chores. So let's all pitch in and do it together with the best attitude so we can get done and have fun, OK? All right, so Connor, I'm going to have you work on pulling the weeds. How long is this all going to take? It might take up to two hours or so. Two hours? <laughs> pulling weeds? At home, Jade never lifts a finger to help her mum. What's weeds? Um, like what, them green stuff? Yeah, the green, all the green stuff. Yeah. Can I just sit down? Maybe I'll, just like help out for a little bit and then maybe... I'll pretend to be over here. <laughs> True to form, she decides to leave the others to it. Um, I'm not really interested. I looked well bored. I think I look proper rude. I was proper well bored. But I'm not doing no yard work. Proper hot as well. Might just pretend to faint. Yeah, I got really bad hay fever. I'm actually not lying. Do you? Yeah, okay. like really bad. Um, I don't have any info on your medical stuff, so I'm, I'm going to take your word for it. On. Jade may have got out of yard work, but she still needs to help Denise with some other chores. Connor is hard at work. But that doesn't mean he's sticking to the rules. To find Denise and Rob, he sparks up right outside the house. Take a break, take five. Oh, no, I don't want to take a break, I want to get it done. Oh. I'd rather just sit and smoke it and get it done for you. We're, we're going to stick to the rules. Can't, we, well, well, we, well, sure, you'll be about more it. happy with me getting it done that you'll eat it. You know what I mean? It makes more sense. Yeah. Makes more sense me getting it done for you instead of taking a break. I don't want to take a break. I'd rather get it done and smoke. You know what? We did our negotiation earlier at the dinner table. Take a break. Take not, five minutes down at the road. I don't want to break. Huh? I don't want to break. Well, Why if you're going to smoke, break? just go down to the road there. Yeah, but I'm not, not having a break. It. I'm not breaking. Here we go. Perfect. We need five pounds. This one. Yep. Yeah, they look good. Shopping done, Denise seizes the chance to get to know Jay better. What you do when you're at home? I'm not really at home a lot. I don't like being around my mum a lot anymore because she just shouts so much, so I just avoid it. Tell yeah. me a little bit more about your family. Because you talk about your mom, I don't, do you have cousins, sisters, brothers, uncles, aunts, dad? Uh, my dad died when I was 15, yeah, just before my 16th birthday, yeah. So now it's just really like my aunts, and my uncles, and my cousins and stuff, so yeah. That's so sad. I didn't know about your father. Hmm. And that was only, that was fairly recent. Yeah. It was just a couple years ago. A year and a half or two years ago. Hmm. Do you miss your dad? I don't mean like talking about it and nothing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Probably just like forget it. You know, sometimes things are really hard in life, but this could be a challenge, you know? If, if you think about it and you talk about it, it kind of, instead of bottling things up, if you let things out and discuss them, you feel better inside. An hour after signing up to the rules, Connor's having second thoughts. I know I said on the contract that I'm going to do four or five days. I only did that to keep you happy because I didn't want to sit there and just absolutely argue straight away. I take a man at, at his word, and, and I don't appreciate the deceitfulness that, that you decided to say, try to fool us this morning, saying fool you at all. I was just trying you to keep you just said that You just said that to appease us. Yeah. You had no intention of following through with your word. Well, I want to change the word, then I want to change the contract. Then then it's not going to work in this household because I, we are not going to permit somebody oh, to come man. in and be well, smoking. Can we change how many I'm on a day then? Huh? Can't we just put uh, how many I'm on a day then and change that? Listen, you want to compromise? Yeah. 
I want to change four a day because that is bad. I'm going to give you six a day for two days, and then we're back to four on Monday. Is that going to work for you? And don't don't tell me something to try to appease me. I want to know the truth on this because I got to make a decision whether right, so or not. So I've you're... had two now, so I can have four more. Yes. You're in. Yeah. I. Right. He's going to make uh, some type of a, uh, an agreement um, just as a way to pacify us. That's not good enough for a man. A man's got to put his word out there and he's got to be honest to his word. So I'm holding him to his honesty. And it seems Jade's doing no better at sticking to her word. Still dragging her heels over chores, Denise has to jog her memory. Ready, Jade? We gotta set the table so we can eat. I don't know how to. I'll help you. The other way. Like that. Yeah, but closer down. Fork and spoon. Fork on the left and the right. So. Might yeah. as well just go to a restaurant. Yeah, sometimes it's easier, but it's really nice to have a home cooked meal sometimes too. Can I have rest for a minute? My legs hurt. Your legs hurt? Yeah. I'm trying to film me. <laughs> I know you're tired, so come on, finish up so we can eat. You need one more napkin, and then the, the cups are right on the counter. And I'll wait for you out here. This is taking an awful long time. <laughs> I'm not doing it tomorrow. That was proper tiring. Wow. I felt like a slave. Connor's also irritated by Denise and Rob's regime, and vents his frustration on 17 year old Isaiah. Smoking wool, that's annoying, that is, I hate that, but I'll keep it to my word on this, so... Right, the walls are pretty straight, isn't it? Uh-huh. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm grounded this week, I can't do anything. Oh, you're grounded, yeah. I got grounded for two weeks, because, uh, I came home late one time. Oh, just for coming home late? Yeah. Well, how late was you? I was an hour and a half late. That's it, you were grounded for three weeks? Two, yeah. Two weeks, then an hour and a half late? Uh-huh. I would just go out anyways. Huh. That's awful. For Denise and Rob, the evening meal is the cornerstone of family life. Lord, you are my shepherd, I shall not want. Thank you for bringing our two guests here today. We love this opportunity uh, to have Jade and Connor with us for the remainder of this week, and we hope it can be very productive. Bless this food to our body, amen. Amen. So do you always pray for every meal? Then? Dinner time meals, yeah. We feel it's important to be thankful for the things that we have. What's your favorite uh, dish in England? Chicken and chips. Do you like Nando's. your chicken done any special way? Barbecued or? I like Nando's. How? Do you not have Nando's here? No. no we don't. <laughs> what are they? I don't even have dinner with my mum, but if I do, I just go to my room or watch telly. Are these people like, they seem proper like, I like put that family in it. I think sometimes you just want to do your own thing, but they seem like all together. Like you got to be all together. No, don't really like it. It's just like when they go out and like do their meals and pray and all that. It's just so weird. It's just random how they do everything and everything's really organised and neat. You know, they run everything day by day like a schedule sort of thing. I, like, I run my day by day by like a flow. Just go with the plan and see what happens. If I want to do something, yeah, I'll do that. The teen's second day in Seattle and the 4th of July, one of the biggest days in the American calendar where they celebrate their independence from the British. Knowing that Connor has an eight month old son, Rob wants to know how he intends to support him. Connor, what do you think it costs you for um, like cannabis and, and all this? 50, maybe 60 dollars a day. And then on the weekend, it could be at like $500. That's awful. If you took that money and you packed it away for, say, a month, what do you think you would do with all that money? I don't know, I'd probably just buy some Xbox stuff, or just buy something for my room or something like that. That's a lot of money you could put aside. Mm. Think about how you could use that money for your son. Yeah, obviously, yeah, and I'll put some away for him as well. And like a little, his own little piggy bank, whatever you want to call it. Well, I'm going out for fuck now. Okay. All right, we'll uh, see you. I'd like to see him step up and 
and state he's going to take on, you know, a manly responsibility for uh, raising a good household. It takes a lot to raise a baby, a child. Um, he's going to be faced with some more difficult challenges than he's ever seen before. Independence Day is the time for celebration, but for homesick Jade, yesterday's talk of her father means that for once she's not in the mood to party. Hey, look at me. Is everything okay? You sure? You know, if you need to talk, Jade, just to let me know and we'll go off to the side and have a chat, okay? Because I, I really want to know what's going on with you. No, I'm not. I don't think you're okay, actually. Actually, I know you're not okay. <clears throat> hey, I wish I can give you a hug. Can you come over and give me a hug? Just turn around a little bit. No. You're sad about something. No, I'm not. Jade. When there's tears rolling down your face. No, my eyes are just itchy. Back in the UK, Jade would drown her sorrows in drink. But in America, it's not just the family's rules that are getting in her way. It's really wanted to go to a corner shop and like get a bottle of vodka and just go to a park and sit there and drink. But can't do that here because I'm not 21. So. Yeah. As part of the Independence Day celebrations, has been invited to a neighbor's party. For Denise and Rob, it's a good opportunity to test Jade and Connor's resolve. There's going to be some alcohol there. Um, we don't want to uh, take any of that. Well, I don't really drink a lot, so it don't bother me. How about uh, you, Jade? You think it's going to be a temptation? Probably, but... Just remember our rules. No drinking, no smoking, no drugs. Same goes over there. We're all going there as a family, representing us as a family. Just remember to use your manners and be polite. We'll have a good time and stay away from the alcohol. At the neighbor's party, being confronted with the temptation of alcohol means Jade can't shake it from her mind. Did you get drunk when you were younger? Like, did you go to clubs and stuff? Well, 21 is pretty strictly enforced around here. Yeah. yeah. I started buying alcohol when I was yeah. like 14, 15. Yeah. I wouldn't call it a party. I would not call today a party <laughs> at all. It's more like a little adult gathering. I suppose of alcohol. I might smuggle one, just the fact that I want some alcohol. Get a little cup, put it on. With the Independence Day fireworks in full swing, Jade and Connor decide to sneak into the neighbor's house. They've got their little fruity thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> their little fruity thing. What little fruity thing? And Jade is quick to grab the alcohol. <laughs> but it looks like they've been rumbled by Josh. Want to help? That's interesting. Oh. Yeah. Come, yeah. Can I just like lounge around your house? Yeah. Might oh, yeah. as well just head on. Yeah. Having smuggled a bottle of alcoholic juice back home, the British teens have no qualms about breaking Rob and Denise's strict prohibition rule. I don't feel guilty. Quite a mat. What is there to feel guilty about? It's juice. Put it in the post box. <laughs> <coughs> oh, pardon me. That is a scrammy. And their first working day in Seattle. Rob is a strong believer in the Christian work ethic. Good morning, Connor. You up yet? Today is a working day. You got a son to feed. So that's something you're going to be thinking about uh, the rest of your life. Morning. Time to get up. It's like four o'clock in the morning. I won't wake up. No? <laughs> okay, well. You'll you'll come around. 
but uh, we need to see progress in five minutes otherwise it's uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different wake up call okay I told you it was going to get worse. You got to start making some progress. That's a regular work day, and that's what we do. We need to, when you're going to school, when you're going to work, you got to get up in the morning, you got to do it. Feel. To teach the British teens the value of working hard to help others, Denise has arranged work for them at a local charity, accompanied by Isaiah and Laura. Taking charge of the teens is Jean, one of the shelter's volunteers. I want to tell you a little bit about Mary's Place. This is a day center for homeless women and women with children who are in maybe a perhaps tr transitional housing. Or the homeless shower. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah. And she's quick to put the teens to work in the kitchen making lunch for the residents. So, guys, you gotta wash your hands, put on some gloves. Oh. Okay, okay, I'll do the onions cut. Well, I'll pickle. Jean's interested in the teens' plans for their future. Laura, so uh, what is it that you're planning on doing? Well, I'm looking at going into a career of finance. Person who's good at math. <laughs> Yeah. Not me. <laughs> yeah. So any of the rest of you have plans for your future? I just smoke a lot of marijuana all, oh. the, all the time, like, every day. So how do you pay for this habit? Um, anyway, I used to work. I do, like, construction work and labour mm -hmm. and all that. Um, just whenever, really, you can get money off like, your parents, your family and all that. I don't like taking money off your family, but if I have to, I have to. What about you? What do you do? Uh, I don't really do a lot except for drink and go out. So that's what you want to do with your life? Yeah. I like live for the weekend. I live to drink and I live to party. It's lunchtime and the teens need to serve the residents. But it's all a bit too much for work shy Jade. That would probably be a boring beer. I don't know, there might be something more interesting. My legs hurt and I just want to go home and sleep. After lunch, the residents want to warn the teens about how addiction has affected their lives. I went to prison um, due to drugs and didn't see my children for three years. I missed the birth of my grandson. So December 1st, I just decided I was not going to get high anymore. How old was he when you first tried it? Well, I was 19, 19. and I'm 47 now. There was a lady in our shelter. She went out, bought herself some pot, smoking. Next thing, she'd smoke so much of it that she was basically comatose. Her friends got panicked. And they took off and left her in the park, passed out. So people say, well, smoking pot isn't a bad thing. Anything that you abuse to the point where it takes you over like that, is a bad thing. I have five kids. I've been out here in the streets since I was like 13 years old. You know, taking care of myself, selling drugs, prostituting, doing drugs and stuff. I, I take responsibility for the actions that I've done. You understand? But once you've done it, there ain't no taking it back. Is it Jade? Yeah, Jade, what you'll find is it's fun for now and you'll have friends who will party with you, but let's say you turn around and you don't have the money to buy the admittance thing to a club and you don't have the money to buy the drinks and you don't have the money to get the pot, mm -hmm. those friends are going to fade away. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be possibly doing stuff that you never considered yourself doing. Mm -hmm. They were probably just like me when they were younger, going out and having fun. I really hope seeing you and how much of a nice person you are, I hope you don't end up there. I really want you to have a great time. I know, you're really upset. You're like really upset. 
I'm just like really emotional. Yeah. Like, oh, it's, it is emotional time. It's a really <laughs> stressful day. Yeah. Well, when that woman was on about the weed and all that and about the coma, I don't even want to touch that stuff anymore. That is horrible. That's just putting things in my mind. Like, I always smell that all the time. I don't want to go for no coma or nothing like that. Connor may have turned his back on weed, but the war on drugs is not over. Denise has suspicions after the party and she summoned Josh. I saw the teens were uh, going into the fridge with the alcohol in it. I don't know if they took any or they decided not to. They must have been pretty sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't see them take a, a sip of it though, you didn't see them open no, it. No, they must have stowed it away for later or something. Yeah. So they might have walked away from it and... Yeah, I, I'm guessing they took it here. Because that was at the very end of the party, and I was like, come on, let's go, guys. And then we just left and came oh, home. Oh, it was at the end yeah. of the party. So, OK, so it was after the fireworks? Uh, yeah. It See, was I was right, picturing, okay. right after you left, Got and we were about to go home. That totally makes sense now, because they had that time from getting the house to here. They could have been drinking it along the way or something. And I was with them the whole way. They didn't drink at all. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what they did. With that. Maybe they drank another time that I didn't see or something. But oh, what did they do with the bottle after they drank they, it? They they probably brought the bottles here and they're not open. That's my guess. I need to talk with them. Yeah, I, but I can't say for sure when I, I understand. the bottles. It might I understand. have been another time. And you know they, what? I'm not going to tell them that you yeah. told me that. Determined to dig out the facts, Denise calls Connor outside. Is there anything that you need to tell me that happened yesterday at the party? No. Nothing at all? No. You're sure? Yeah, I'm positive. OK. Today I was informed that you and Jade had taken a drink. I haven't touched any drink or nothing like that. So obviously I'm still innocent until mm -hmm. I've actually been proved that I've taken it. Hmm. Can you send Jade out here, please? Uh, Jade, I don't want you. Hello, Jade. Hello. 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 Josh, do you want to put the table to So is there anything that happened at the party? And a choice that you made or anything that you did that you weren't supposed to do? Or were tempted and gave in to the temptation? No. No? Can you look at me when we talk? I'd like to see your eyes. We didn't take nothing. You didn't drink any alcohol? We looked in the fridge. Tell me about that. There's like different drinks in there. Then one of them dropped, and then, like, not dropped, like broke, it dropped. And I tried to close it and it hit it. So it made like loads of noise. Then I put it back in. And then, yeah. Hmm. Oh, you've been accused of taking alcohol from their neighbour's fridge? Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't understand why. I, I saw you guys looking in there, but I never saw them take any alcohol. And that's what I told her when she asked. I feel like they don't trust me at all, and it's actually really annoying and frustrating that they're just accused of something that we haven't done. With no concrete proof, Rob and Denise decide their best tactic is to give Connor and Jade the benefit of the doubt. Um, my initial feeling is that, that I believe you, and I'd like to continue believing and trusting you. We don't know. Maybe you guys took a drink, but that's uh, your own conscience, so you need to you know, stay true to yourselves in this. We care. We yeah, absolutely. Care. We care a lot. And we just want to make sure that we're doing the best we can help you make good choices. I feel so guilty. I feel so guilty. We're all big about trust and all that. And they said they believed us and they trusted us, so... I feel like shit, to be honest about it. Lying to Denise. So bad. So, so, so bad. I've never really felt like that before. I've never really had a guilty conscience. And that come up a lot, and I, I don't really like it. Family, but awful. Jade, you have, I'm going to take the elevator down. Okay. I'll meet you right in the front of the car. Bye bye. Bye. 
I'll try. Before the teens head home, Denise is keen to have some more quality time with Jade. And Rob wants to make sure that Connor returns to the UK with the right attitude. Yeah. What time do they normally start work in England? You usually start about 8 o'clock. I eight have 8 o'clock, so you want to get up, have a little bit of breakfast, get oh. ready for the day, right? If you keep on uh, getting yourself involved in cannabis and smoking, you're going to be wasting a lot of that money that uh, you work for. So think about uh, all the hours you put in just to support that nasty habit. I do what you said, put some money aside. Yeah. My wages each like, month or whatever, and I get money. That's something you could put into your son, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's going to get really tough, and you're going to want to quit. But you know what? You can't quit. you got to keep... Keep going, keep persevering. Denise wants to get to the bottom of why Jade was upset on the morning of Independence Day. You were crying, something was really bothering you. Yeah, but. Mm hmm. Well, nothing major. I'm fine <laughs> now, so yeah. it don't really matter. And, um, so I think it might be having anything to do with your dad. No, I don't like talking about it, though. You don't? No. I think maybe one of your challenges you might think and consider is an emotional challenge. And what I mean by that is um, challenging yourself to, to talk about things that you don't want to talk about. Nah. Nah. Hm. Doesn't sound like she talks about her feelings about anything too much to anybody. So that's the challenge, just trying to get her to, to talk and open up. After some one-to-one -one time with the British teens, Denise and Rob have arranged for them to work with some young people with disabilities. I sometimes wear this shirt. Hi, guys, welcome. I'm Ed. Hello, I'm Connor. Hi, Hi Connor. Hi, Hi Jade. Yeah. Welcome to Outdoors for All. So we've got a camp going on today for kids with disabilities, and we've got a lot of volunteers who are similar aged. The teens will be doing outdoors activities in pairs. Jade is teaming up with Brian and Connor with Michael. Michael, this is Connor. You guys will be kayaking and hiking buddies today. Remember that. Connor's keen to get to know his buddy a bit better. What like disability do you have? I like big skin grabs for all. Do you have small lungs? Yeah. Oh, so you have a problem breathing. Oh, my God. I don't Having been born with underdeveloped lungs, Michael finds physical activity difficult, but it's really important for him to keep fit. Why didn't you have a race? Oh. You're the first one to get to that. Both you, go on. Don't run across. Come on, keep running. London party girl Jade's a little more out of her comfort zone. Oh, yeah, I'm wearing flip-flops and we're going hiking, so... <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. So that's a bit... <laughs> that's a bit dodgy. My feet are going to hurt by the end of this. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Do you want to clip them up here? Yeah. One. Yeah. With his own eight-month-old son, Connor's been a reluctant dad. But away from home, it's proving easier. So, like, if I show you, you sit there, you're going to do it, do it like that, like that. Oh, I... Do you understand? Yeah. So keep practising that and you'll get to hang it, like that. Very nice. That's it. I don't like hiking. I don't like walking a lot. I'd rather get a bus up here. Hello, buddy. Have yeah. fun? Yeah. Hard work? Ah, uh, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. How'd your arms feel? Good. Good? You feel strong? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. It's good fun. It's good to teach them how to do life skills like that. So I enjoyed it a lot. Lunchtime gives the teens a chance for a quick catch up. I reckon it was good there. I got on well with them. I hope he enjoyed himself. Had fun, actually. Yeah, it was good. But how did that make you feel about your son and that, like, working with, like, a little kid? And... It made me feel like 
I actually like made the effort to be a proper dad and all that, so I can't wait to start doing that on my son. So I actually felt like a dad. And I've never felt like that before. So it's like a new feeling for me. Yeah. Kind of sad, but kind of happy feeling. Mixed emotions, really. Well, mine's gone. Oh, yeah. Well, not too deep. Basically, I will be it. And you have to go and hide. <laughs> oh. We can do it, Brian. Come on, let's try and turn around. Come on, Brian. You're doing it. I'll just relax. I'm your British guest. Please, please, excuse me. I really misses my son a lot. It really does. It's really hard to like, think about it and all that. So hopefully when I get home, I'll spend a lot more quality time with my son and take him down the park and play with him. So, yeah. Right, I'm gonna go catch myself some kids. <laughs> Back at the house, Rob and Denise are keen to know how the teens got on. Hey! Hey, alright? We're looking forward to seeing you guys all day. Hi! Oh. How did you guys like it today? It was fun. Yeah. yeah, it was funny. We got that paired up with like kids. We went for a little hike, walked up the hike together, uh -huh. then went to the kayak together. My guy had, um, I was asking him about it, he said that he has very, very small lungs, so he couldn't breathe properly and he can't really exercise very it's well. It's striking when you think about all the gifts that you're given and that, you know, you're fully abled. But, well, you know, some people aren't quite as fortunate in that regard. Just because they've got disabilities, it doesn't mean they're very, they can't do anything we can. And I think you've been um, displaying more characteristics of a man. You're, you're conscientious of... Uh, you know, people around you, and uh, you're taking on more responsibility. And and I, if you keep on that path, I can see things improving for you and your son. You know, you want to be able to get together with him. You want to you want to have that you know father son bond, and and uh, you want to be that person that he looks up to later in his life. That's what I felt like today. Like when I was with the kid, I was with today. He was quite young. Yeah. He was obviously young last time. He was only about. Six or seven, so it kind of had like a father bond with me and him at one point. Mm. So that's why I found yeah. it. it was like a new feeling for me. That's why I want to be like my son all the time. Yeah. So it's kind of different. Yeah. So that, that new feeling, it really feels good to have that. Yeah, it does feel uh, good. Really good. Yeah, good. Somebody get this other steak, you guys. Don't stand around. Give us some more slack here. I need to speak to Lewis, see Lewis more. And I need to be there right, for him. Right. And I'm obviously a young dad and I'm still learning. But I will try a lot more to see him when I get back. It's the teens' final evening living as members of the Smith Irwin family. 16 9. We're up in our ass. No. I got it. Oh, but Denise and Rob still have concerns about Jade. Oh, Jade, can you uh, want to come in and talk for a bit? I haven't talked that much about your dad. I don't actually know what I feel. Like, I haven't actually got a feeling about my dad dying. It's still not that, that real, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean? Because no one really told me what was going on, so I was just like, oh. I'm like, because I was going through, I was just like about to do my exams, mm -hmm. so no one really wanted to say, yeah, your dad's like, dying. When's the last time you, t you saw your father? I ended up going out on the Saturday. I went to my friend's house and then um, my mum mm -hmm. tried to ring me like over 50 times. Oh. I just chucked my phone in my bag and that's what I always do. And she tried to ring my friends, but I was just like, just ignore it. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Do you felt like you um, had time to say goodbye? No, I felt really guilty. Like, I think that's probably why it's worse, because I feel really guilty. He wouldn't want you to carry any guilt like this, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. Do you think you've ever grieved your father's passing? No, I don't think I did it properly. I think it was a bit... I think my grieving was drinking. Mm -hmm. That's how I got rid of my pain and stuff. That's why I mm. just carried it on. It takes a lot of courage to face some difficult emotions sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 
So what you're saying is you, you think that you were, you turned to drinking instead of faced that challenge? Yeah, because I was drinking a little bit before. Mm -hmm. But after that, I just literally just went out to drink. Mm -hmm. And then usually go to school, but on school, like even sometimes during the school week, I'd drink and I'd have exams the next day and I'd drink in the morning. Mm -hmm. like, but... I think it's just carried on now. I've just got used to it, so I'll just drink. I think that's a huge self-discovery that you just made, and you just said that out loud. Because it's the first time I've heard you mm -hmm. speak about it. Sounds like you've been doing some thinking about that. Mm. I never actually talked about my dad dying and that. I never actually thought it was real until today, so that's why I'm kind of like, oh, maybe... Maybe I should talk about it, cause I don't know. Like, sometimes you wake up and you're like, oh, this talk with my dad, but you can't. So you're like, oh. I think I blamed my mum. I blamed my aunts, my uncles, and everyone that really knew for not telling me, but like being able to talk about it made me feel a bit better. I, I can't wait to go back and see her and see how things change and that. And I don't know, maybe I'll stop going out because sometimes I just go out just to defy my mum. The teen's time living with Rob, Denise and their family has come to an end. Mm -hmm. But Jade still has something on her mind. When we went to that party, I kind of lied. I did have a little drink. But that's because that day that I was really upset and I'm used to just being like, oh, I'm going to get some drink. So mm -hmm. I kind of just caved in at that point. You've like put trust in me in that and... I kind of like broke that trust and mm. it kind of like brought my conscience back like oh mm. someone's actually like cared enough to like be like oh all right I believe you and I'm like that... really sorry for like lying thanks for letting me know I forgive wow. you Jade thank you for telling me I really appreciate that and that's another thing that I said you know that's courage to do what you just did it wasn't all Jade at all I did take some part in it I did have some so at the end of the day it's not just Jade it was kind of both of us how did you feel about when we sat you down and, and we looked oh, in your eye and we, we told you so that bad, uh, we trusted you and everything? No, I felt so bad. I even said yeah. it so many yeah, times. I, I felt so. awful. That says a lot about your character. I'm really glad you guys said something. <laughs> I've learned too much this week. <laughs> I've learned how to talk to people better. I've learned how to get up early. I've learned not to be lazy. I've learned how to just go out and have better highs and then just smoke me. I want to be a dad, yeah, definitely. Because I took responsibility to bring him into the world and nothing worse than having a dad being brought up without a dad. At first, um, it was like pulling teeth to get her to talk. And I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. She didn't want to talk about anything. And then after, a little bit of prompting and think as we got more familiar with each other and comfortable, she opened up slowly. So I see some growth in that area. I've learned maybe I should help others a bit more instead of just thinking about myself and not to go out as much and drink and get drunk and yeah. I'm gonna try and like talk to mom and uh, and like, build bridges with her and that. Uh, <laughs> just want to say goodbye. Thanks a lot for coming out this week. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Give it a hug. Oh, Thank I you for you. Week, huh? Bye. See ya. Bye. Have a good trip. We'll see ya. We've just loved uh, having him here this week. You did. And uh, I think we had a positive outcome and sad to see them go.
hopefully this time away maybe has made both of us think and uh, think about one another. So as they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder and I feel I've missed her. <laughs> Hi, stranger. How are you? Are you turned? I'm black. I <laughs> I'm sorry about my like behaviour. Mm -hmm. When there was one day at the thing, and um, they made me like talk about my dad, mm -hmm. and I got really upset. Okay, you know, since all these things happened, I did see you cry. You were suffering in silence. I've seen the impact of grief on people. I've been there, I know. I know what I'm talking about. I'm glad that uh, at least you are aware you'll be able to deal with this. Oh. <coughs> Talked to him that, and it was like, it's good. I would say it's the beginning. Because that goes to show that uh, she has insight into what she's been doing. Hopefully, it all keeps on going good, innit? Yeah. It? It's the chance of a lifetime for him to go and do this. If he come back and he went straight, straight back into his old ways, I would, it, it would devastate me, I think. I think I'd be really upset. It's important that he's changed for him. He's got a young baby. He needs to actually grow up a little bit and stop being a kid. Oh, yeah. You all right? Yeah. Are you? Oh, I ain't too bad. Yeah? Oh, I missed you. Yeah? Yeah. How was your week? I missed you as well, mate. Have you got a week, brother? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Go. Oh, it's brilliant. I loved it. Yeah. Every moment of it. Oh, stuff I did was incredible. I ain't touching weed again. No way. Fuck that. The stuff I've seen. No yeah. way. <laughs> Never cried when you came over before, mate. I loved it. Every moment of it. Yeah. Was brilliant. I got so much to tell. Yeah. Every, every day it was just changed my life completely. I took your tenor, which I'm not proud of, and I'm sorry. Obviously, I wasn't old and right mind. And if I get money, if I get a job, we'll give you it back. So I'm sorry about that. I shouldn't have lied. Can I play man? <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh <geez>. Yeah. <laughs> Don't feel weird at all. I just got that things changed and everything's more happy and different. I've never been like this in my family before. It's just great to all come back together. Yeah, I just... I feel so happy that I'm part of this experience and it's changed my life around. And I owe to Denise and Rob, to be honest. I've been seeing Lewis a bit more when I've come back now, and it's just a lot better. He's actually starting to realise I'm his dad, and it's just really nice to see him smile with me and know who I am. One, two, three. When I was on drugs and drinking, or I didn't really care too much. The only thing I cared about was getting high and all that. But now I would drop anything for the world for him. And now it actually means so much to me. It's just an incredible feeling. It's just one of the best feelings in the world. <laughs>